For NRIs who want to invest in India, there is always a dilemma in the mind. Should I invest in India or not? What happens to my money in dollar terms? Will I get back enough and more in my dollar terms? Will I make more money by investing in US or will I make more money by investing in India? In the today's topic, do not invest in India. I am going to examine whether it is better for you not to invest in India or it makes absolute sense for you to invest in India. This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Let me examine today, does it make any sense for NRIs to invest in India? What is the purpose of investment? The purpose of investment is to get more than what I put into that particular trade or an investment. We have a complexity when it comes to question of NRI case. NRIs live outside of India. India means rupee assets. For NRIs, dollar assets is something which they always fancy of. The doubt that is always there in the mind is, will I lose value of my investment in dollar terms? What might happen going forward? Is it worthwhile for you not to invest in India? I am going to examine each and every aspect of this particular problem and leave the decision in your mind should you invest in India or stay away from India. For those of you who want to drive, looking at the rear view mirror, if you look at the investment landscape and if you scan through the last 50 years, it appears obvious that investing in US is a better strategy for you. By investing in US, you made approximately 7% CAGR in the last 30 years. Will the future be same? What are the changes which are happening? We will be failing in our duties, we will be doing a big mistake if you do not see the reversal which is happening. A big reversal is happening in the world order. Things are happening in a different way from the way what you saw in the last 30 to 50 years. What are the changes which we are seeing now? Let's examine them one by one. The first reversal which is appearing, which is happening and progressing day by day is the world order is changing world which was west centric is moving towards east centric uh, now we have seen between russia and ukraine war you see how europe was brought down on its knees and you saw how nobody cares a damn for the dictate of us so this is the first sign that the world order is changing for last many decades it appeared like it was a bipolar world us and the west were consuming and the Chinese were producing and selling. So there is a particular set of consumers and there is a particular set of manufacturer. It appeared like a bipolar world. Now came the pandemic and this bipolar world is giving way for multipolar world. The world has learned now how dangerous it is to depend on one single country for the supply lines for the world's factories. So world is looking for somebody else to take the load of supplies from China alone. So instead of being centric on the US and China, now more countries are taking the role of consumers as well as the suppliers. The de-dollarization of the world is a work in progress and it is gaining momentum day after day. Now in case of India, India is in the forefront of de-dollarization of the trade. It's one of the world's biggest economies. It has been impacted. It might get impacted if it depends on dollar. What did India do? India prevailed upon several countries allowed to trade in the Indian rupee. Today, many countries' banks have opened Vostro Nostro account with the Reserve Bank of India today. And whatever that is required, imports and exports can be carried out using these Vostro Nostro account. You don't need dollars anymore. For a long period of time, US and the West arm twisted rest of the countries by making dollar as the world's reserve currency. They brought in the SWIFT system and played around with the SWIFT system and arm twisted countries around the world to dance to their tunes. Once this de-dollarization of the trade takes shape, this dominance of dollar is going to come down. It has 
immediate impact for a lot of countries. There are so many countries across the world which got affected because of this centralization of trade using the dollar. Take the case of emerging economies, take the case of African economies. They had nothing to lose. There was no problem from them. But just because US brought down the interest rate, people borrowed in US and moved this money to emerging countries. Now, just because the US is increasing the interest rate, the interests of all these emerging economies are put into a difficult phase in their economic growth. And the world has realized to depend excessively on dollar trade is not in their best favor. World was just looking out for an alternative. The Russia-Ukraine war and the events which panned out after Russia-Ukraine war was a defining moment for the de-dollarization of the trade to happen. Today, India is dealing with 18 different countries. These are not the pushover countries of Africa. India is dealing in rupee today with Russia, Saudis, UAE, Germany, Italy, New Zealand and so many other countries. 73 countries across the globe today are showing interest to deal in India using the rupee account. So this is a major change. If you do not understand the implications of this change, probably your investment decisions might go wrong. One of the major reasons why NRIs refuse or hesitant to invest in India in the rupee accounts is the fear of rupee losing value against the dollar. And if you scan through the last 50 years, their fears are not unfounded. These are the genuine doubts that could be there in the mind of an investor. What are the changes that I am observing which will have an impact and probably this situation what you saw in the last 50 years will not happen going forward. There are major changes which are happening which will affect the dollar to rupee exchange rate. Let's examine them one by one. The biggest factor which had a bearing on rupee dollar equation was India's dependence on energy from outside of India. We depended too much on crude and the crude was denominated in dollars and unless you have the dollars you can't buy the crude. Now two changes are happening here simultaneously. One, India is able to procure crude without paying in dollars. So you can pay rupees and you can get the dollars. Two, the energy requirement which is coming from outside India, there is a constant push and a work in progress and a defined time frame within India to wean itself away from the rest of the world for its energy needs. Today, a lot of work is which is happening in the renewable energy space. Even solar farms are being put in a place called Ladakh and it is being transported from there to rest of India. There is ample solar light throughout India. There is a hydrogen machine which has been funded uh, to a great extent. It is said that within next 15 to 20 years, energy self-sufficiency for India will be a realizable target. What might happen because of this? Your dependency on energy from outside world will come down. That means your requirement of Forex will come down. Whatever the energy you need today, you can buy it using the rupees. What was happening all these days? India was buying oil from Saudis or other countries by paying dollars. Now these countries are rich in dollars. What will they do with these dollars? These dollars would invariably go to US and will be parked in the US treasuries. That means the excessive dollars which these countries earned used to be parked in the US treasuries. Now the moment they start selling this crude in the Indian rupees, they will have excess rupees. Instead of excess dollars, they will have excess rupees. What are they going to do with this? These excess rupees are likely to be parked either in the Indian treasuries or it is going to be invested in India through the FDI route or through a sovereign fund route, the excess rupees will be used for growth of India. The countries are always looking for growth options where they can make money by investing their excess supplies of uh, rupees or dollars that they have got. India gives them a perfect option to invest this money. So the money which was going towards the US today will start coming towards India and this will have tremendous impact on dollar to rupee in favor of rupee. So the rupee is unlikely to fall to a great extent going forward from here. Most likely it may remain stable and I will not even rule out 
rupee appreciate against the dollar in the near term. The second biggest problem for India from a forex reserves perspective was the defense imports. Now in the last 10 years, a lot of work has been done. The defense imports have been substituted to a great extent from Make in India program. Now forget about the imports. India is exporting a lot of defense related items to the rest of the world. What was a negative for India has been converted into a positive for the Indian rupee and this trend is going to gain ground. The third biggest problem which was affecting the forex was India's imports versus exports. India was importing more, crude is one of the major imports, then the exports were not sufficient enough. Now this equation is going to change drastically because of Make in India program. I was going through the budget proposals. Within next five to seven years, India has a target to export two trillion worth of exports from India. And this is going to be a game changer. And this is in all probability is likely to happen. Now, India is a very big market. If anybody wants to sell goods to India, let's say there is a company outside of India and it wants to sell something to India, Indian government is forcing these companies to make it in India. If you want to sell it in India, you have to set up factories here. What did Apple do? Apple set up the iPhone factories here. Likewise, the companies could be manufacturing it in China and they have seen how difficult it is to maintain the supply chain if you focus everything in one single geography. They are also looking for China plus one option to get their supply chain. So the Make in India program and China plus one is helping India to produce goods and services within India and export to rest of the world. So this when it gains ground will be a forex additive that means india will earn more forex than the forex it might need so which means to say rupee is going to be strengthened because of make in india program it is fair to expect as times pass by as years roll down we have more exports than the imports that we are making into the country there is one interesting observation when the US started increasing the rates, there was the dollar moving out of India. The FIIs, foreign institutional investors, normally will pull out if the interest rate in US goes up or if the stock markets come down. This time what happened? Before this event happened, India had a forex kitty of somewhere closer to $650 billion. When I checked the latest figures, India's forex still stands at about 575 to 580 billion dollars. Yesterday I was in an event in an institute called TAPME and during the panel discussion we discovered that this drop in forex is not because of the dollars which have gone out of India but the valuation was less only because of mark to market of US treasuries where the bond prices have fallen down because of rise in interest rate in US. If this is the case then how did so many dollars came in? The answer lies in two things. One, when FIS pulled out the money, a great amount of FDI inflows have come into the country. FDI is foreign direct investment. That means you bring the money, set up factories, do something and that money cannot be withdrawn. Two, in the year 2022, the NRI community poured hell of a lot of money into India. The dollars which came into India was highest in the year 22 said to be about 87 billion dollars so india has seen the worst period in the last one year when the us increased its rates from zero to the present level and it did not materially impact likewise look at the stock market performance the us market the dow jones which was somewhere around 36000 dropped down to 30 but what happened to the Indian market? Did the Indian market fall down to that level? The answer is no. Indian market which was at 62,000 dropped for a short period of time up to 52,000 and started climbing back. It literally went and touched the previous lifetime highs. Of course, it did not hold on there and it came down. The second wave which brought it down did not push the Sensex less than 58,000. As I record this video, the Sensex is at 60,000, which means to say just about two to three percent 
short of the previous highs that is where the sensex is whereas the all the world indices are deep below their previous highs it speaks volumes about the strength of the indian market the growth of the economy and the prospects of india here one another interesting factor that came to my mind was for most part of last 30 50 years indian inflation was very very high and the inflation in rest of the world was very low the inflation in us used to be 2% or below that whereas the inflation in india used to be 6% or 7% now situation has changed inflation in india is around 5 6% whereas the inflation in us uk europe and all these places the inflation is much higher it is common knowledge wherever there is inflation is more that currency is going to be devalued that will come under pressure so you have a situation where inflation in india today is lower than inflation in rest of the world particularly west so this is going to give a lot of support for the indian rupee and if you are an nri investor then you should not be worrying about rupee losing value because of inflation differential i spoke to you about the great reversal which is happening i also spoke to you about the factors which are supporting the rupee a stock market performance will not come just because of that stock market performance comes because of the growth in the economy that is the primary driver unless you have the growth the stock markets will not climb up permanently for long periods of time now if you look at the growth prospects of any country in the world it is very fair to say india is the only country india is the only major country where growth is happening even china has slowed down and it will continue to slow down because of excessive debt it has in china right now growth in us or growth in europe everywhere they are facing the recessionary pressures there is nowhere it is visible right now i was watching an episode from rhythm desai of morgan stanley rhythm desai says within next 3 to 4 years 20% of the world's growth will come from one country and that's called india without india growing it is impossible for the world to grow and it is not something to be a uh, missed out and rhythm desai is such a respectable name and his words have to be taken with all the seriousness if you are looking out for growth then india is the only country where the growth is happening for the growth to happen there are few drivers which are required let's look at a few of them india's energy consumption today is 900 watts per person in the us it is 9000 look at the stark difference now in the last 10 years you have seen india has electrified every nook and corner of india every village has an electricity today unless you provide energy to every section of the economy the economy cannot progress even a few watts excessive consumption it only means the economy is growing in the next 5 years the 900 watt consumption is expected to rise to 1500 watts even if it is looks to be 900 to 1500 but a collective level 1.4 billion population look at the amount of changes it might bring in the economy for an economy to grow infrastructure is the key one of the biggest problems india faced was lack of infrastructure when we talk about infrastructure one is the physical infrastructure the airports the railways the road structure I travel extensively. I travel to every nook and corner of India. When I see India of 10 years before and when I see India of today, there is a huge difference. The road network which is there is of world class today. Even you go to villages, the roads are so beautiful. Air connectivity in India, you have built so many airports at the moment, it is mind boggling. And in fact, the work which is done in the last 10 years is showing up now india's biggest problem was lower productivity the lower productivity was mainly because of infrastructure bottlenecks all these bottlenecks are being removed and the india's productivity is on the rise but i would like to talk to you about one another infrastructure physical infrastructure it is required but the real infrastructure which is being built in india is the digital infrastructure 
the digital infrastructure which is being built in India has no precedence, has not been done in any other country, be it UK, USA, any other part of the world you look at it, the digital infrastructure is our own and it is built at a population scale. It is built in such a way, it is a democratic setup. Every person, every person who lives in India, every citizen of India can make best use of digital infrastructure. I was traveling from Mangalore to Bangalore. I stopped in a place called Sakleshpur and my wife wanted to pick up something. And I picked up a couple of notes and trying to give it to the, uh, the street vendor. He says, no cash, sir. There is a QR code. Please pay from your Google Pay or your phone pay. This is the same story. You go to any village, you go to any street, you go to any place, everybody is using digital infrastructure to transact. Now it has tremendous potential. Now think about it. All these days, these people were transacting using cash. When they transacted using cash, apart from hassles of storing the cash, remitting it to the bank and all these problems, they cannot prove that the cash has come because of this business. Now imagine if all transactions are being done using the QR code or any UPA or a digital infrastructure, whichever the mode they look at, the bank account is required to track this, which means to say the banks know what is the turnover of that particular vendor. Hitherto, they were not able to get the loan, but today a banker can lend to any business based on the cash flow he is recording. It could be a tea stall owner, it could be a fruit vendor, it could be anyone. If the banks knows what is going to be your cash flows, then banks can give you credit to that business. And when the credit is made available to all these people, just imagine the explosive growth India can go through. There are a lot of things which are happening. Now, I don't have to talk about uh, the Trinity, Aadhaar, Jandan and mobile. It's well known now. India is building world-class digital infrastructure. As I said, there is no precedence. There is no other country uh, which has implemented it. Every country is looking forward to copy this program from India. We saw uh, during the vaccine delivery system, the COVID application. We have seen the success of Aadhaar. We have seen the success of uh, bank account, Jandan uh, bank accounts and linking of Aadhaar bank account and mobile. What kind of a revolution it has built in. There are a lot of works which are in progress and these will have a tremendous impact on the way the business is done. They will have tremendous impact on the growth prospects and they are completely democratic setups. And these infrastructure, the digital infrastructure is built by the state. One of the platform is ONDC platform, Open Network for Digital Commerce. It, it can take on the big names like Amazon and Flipkart and others in this particular line. It's a completely free platform which is being built where the buyers and sellers can list themselves. It's an open architecture and it is a non-profit platform which is built. All these changes have tremendous potential. If reports are to be believed and if I scan through different uh, research reports of different companies, it is said that currently 3.18 trillion economy of India will be transformed into a 10 trillion size economy within the next 10 years. And I believe this is possible and not participating in this, not investing in India today is probably the biggest risk that you can take. It is not by investing in India you are taking a risk, by not investing in India you are taking a biggest risk. When is the best time to invest in India? I would say today is the best time to invest in India. In the last two years Indian markets have not moved up. That means they have given you enough opportunity for you to come and onboard yourself by investing in India. A day will come very soon within a couple of months where Indian stock markets will take out the previous highs and will move towards a lifetime highs and a massive bull run is ready to be unfolded. If you have an intention to participate in the Indian stock market, make best out of this, then you can make best use of our services. Our number is shown here on the screen through a WhatsApp message from any corner of the world. You can reach to us and we will help you with the best possible avenues to invest in India. So why delay? Send that message to us now.
Dear viewers, hope the video that I have done today helped you to understand why investing in India is a compelling case for you and not investing in India itself will be a big risk for you then please do like this video if you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe for the channel please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon don't forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones thank you very much for watching this episode on nra money clinic and i shall be back with you next friday with yet another episode of your life your money till then stay safe Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.